Are you thinking about heading to the Bahamas? Wondering what all you need to get in order to have a smooth check-in? Hi, I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, I'll list 12 things that you're going to need. And I'll tell you about another resource to greatly simplify your prep for the trip. Okay, so you're heading off to the Bahamas, and you want to know all the documents and other things you'll need to have. Well, here's my checklist, but I'm going to start out by saying that this list assumes a U.S. boat, U.S. citizens, and coming from the U.S. There may be requirements that I don't know about for other combinations, particularly foreign citizens or foreign flagged boats. First, you're going to need a passport for each person on board, valid for at least three months beyond your expected stay in the Bahamas. You're going to need your boat documents for both the big boat and the dinghy. You'll need the original of the U.S. Coast Guard documentation and or your state registration, valid throughout the entire period you expect to be in the Bahamas. Now, if your Coast Guard uh, documentation is going to renew in the middle of the time, Um, Go ahead and check in with what you have. They'll see that it's renewing partway through. And then make sure that whoever handles your mail scans and emails to you a copy of that new registration or new documentation when it does come through. I would suggest having a couple of copies of each one of your major documents there. Be sure, again, to include the dinghy as part of the documents you have. You also need your boat insurance documents. A few marinas may require proof of at least liability insurance. I can't find that proof of insurance is required for entry into the Bahamas. But if you do have insurance, it's always a good idea to have it with you. A pet import permit. If you've got a pet on board, you need a permit. Even if you think that you've your pet is not going to go off the boat, such as a cat. You really would still need to have that pet permit because if you should have to fly out for any sort of an emergency, you will have to have one to take them with you on a plane. And if you show up there, don't have one or try to get one at a later date so that you can fly with one, you're going to get into a fair amount of bureaucratic nightmare Uh, if you don't already have it and didn't declare your pet when you came into the country. You need a U.S. Customs decal. Boats 30 feet or longer must pay an annual fee of $27.50 for a border crossing decal. It's um, also called a user fee decal by the government. Cruisers just call it the customs decal. You need the number from this on your return to the U.S., or continuation on to a U.S. territory such as Puerto Rico or the U.S. Virgin Islands. You can get it online. It has to be renewed every year. There's no need to renew it if you're not going to be out of the U.S. Um, The sticker will be mailed to you, which can take sometimes like several months. However, all you really need is the number off of it, which will be emailed to you within a day or two of your online purchase. You can also get this as part of signing up for the Rome app, and um, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Okay, VHF, single sideband license, and an MMSI number. You need a U.S. license to operate your VHF and single sideband in the Bahamas. Now, admittedly, I've never heard of anybody being checked for this, but it is a legal requirement. And if you got into some other trouble for any reason, this could be one more thing that would be thrown at you. The MMSI number for your VHF, which is really important for emergency transmissions, needs to be an international number issued by the FCC. The MMSI numbers issued by Boat US do not qualify for international. However, if you already have one from Boat US, it's a real pain to switch. You generally have to send the radio back to the manufacturer. So this is something to think about way in advance of your trip. Ham radio. If you have a ham radio, you must receive a Bahamas reciprocal license to use your ham radio in the Bahamas, even for email. You need to allow at least two months for processing this. Send a copy of your U.S. license, copy of your birth certificate or passport, photo page, a $25 international money order, 
and a letter requesting a reciprocal license to the Public Utilities Commission in Nassau, Bahamas. Now, it's always best to send things to the Bahamas by FedEx, UPS, or DHL. U.S. mail is extremely slow to reach them. The next thing you want to have is an EPIRB. Now, admittedly, this is a safety item and not a legal requirement, but make sure your EPIRB is registered and that the batteries test good. It won't do you any good if it is not registered. Then there's your Q flag and your Bahamas courtesy flag. You need a Q flag prior to checking in and a Bahamian courtesy flag after. A Bahamian courtesy flag typically lasts six weeks to two months before it just fades out or becomes too tattered. It's disrespectful to the Bahamians to fly one in poor condition. Take a sufficient number with you. They're more expensive in the Bahamas and can be hard to find. I've put links for buying them on Amazon. That's the best price I've ever found. And frankly, they are about the same quality anywhere that you buy them. It's not like spending more money is going to get you a better quality one. Then there is the Roamap that I mentioned before. The old SVRS and local boater option programs have been discontinued, replaced by the Roam app for checking back into this U.S. It's officially called the CBP Roam app, and you have to be sure to put that CBP, stands for Customs and Border Patrol, in when you are searching for the correct app. But it can be used by citizens of any nation aboard small boats flagged in any nation. It is not only for U.S. citizens or U.S. boats. You don't need to check in in person unless for some reason you are flagged. Be sure to get that ahead of time and read about setting it up. It's optional, but you can get your Bahamas check-in forms before you go. Downloading and printing your forms is basically a time saver once you're in the Bahamas. As sometimes you have to go to a different office to get the forms, and then sometimes you get charged for them. We anchored out off of South Bimini for check-in and had to purchase the forms from a marina as the airport customs and immigration officer didn't have them. More recently, when we checked in at Great Harbor Key Marina, they did have the forms there, and it was very simple. So doing them yourself can help. Each person aboard must complete an immigration arrival card. You can't get it online, but both it and the customs forms can be obtained from the Bahamas Tourist Office in Plantation, Florida. They'll mail the forms to you, and if you Google on Bahamas Tourist Office, you'll get the right place. Okay, let's talk about fishing. It's the last one in our topics. Your Bahamas cruising permit will include a fishing permit. That's the good news. But you need to learn about the bag limits, seasons, and everything else. On your own, you can just uh, Google on Bahamas fishing license and get the information. That is it for what's on my absolute positive checklist. But let's face it. There's a lot more than just those things to prepare for a trip to the Bahamas aboard your own boat. And sometimes it can be hard to track down all the information you need. You wonder what you didn't know that you didn't know about. And with that in mind, I've created an online course called Get Ready to Cruise the Bahamas. It brings together absolutely everything you need to know, all of the legalities, how best to cross the Gulf Stream, what charts you want, the cruising guides, how to get weather information and tide information. Those are critical, particularly the tides if you have a deeper draft boat. How to handle provisioning, your communications, the internet, calling and texting. And also, even though we don't want to think about it too much, emergency services. I give links to every site you may need for things you may need to sign up for and recommended products such as the best charts, fishing regulations, internet options, and more. Now, the course is just $39, which I frankly think is a steal of a deal for the amount of time it will save you and the confidence you'll gain that you really have done everything you need to for your trip. A link to learn more about the course, Get Ready to Cruise the Bahamas, is in the show notes. Thank you for listening to the Boat Galley podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.